What could be more exciting than an Oculink cable? An Oculink cable? What's an Oculink cable? This is Gen 4. It's like Thunderbolt, but it's not Thunderbolt because it doesn't do USB. It's strictly PCIe only. But... PCIe? Yeah. I ordered and have received the GPD WinMax 2 2023 edition with 64 gigabytes of memory and 2 terabytes of local storage. This is the top end configuration that you can get. Why? Because of the Minis Forum PC, obviously. In case you didn't see it, I've been reviewing a lot of mini PCs lately, working on things like Thunderbolt clustering, using the Thunderbolt ports on those to connect them, and getting a 10 to 20-ish gigabit connection between machines. This is actually something that's really awesome, because a lot of these mini PCs only have a very limited connection, and if you can run a, a low power, low cost, because some of these are like $200, $300, um, cluster for your home lab, I think you're in a lot better position than you would be running, you know, five-year-old enterprise legacy hardware that's loud and hot and uses a lot of electricity. You can really get a lot more mileage out of, you know, a four-core mini PC, but the thing that sucks is the network connectivity, unless you can connect with Thunderbolt. Well, enter Oculink. Thunderbolt, theoretically, is 40 gigabit. Real world, more like 20 gigabit. The DMA situation for anybody that's ever used a Thunderbolt external storage will tell you that it's going to top out at about 2.8 gigabytes per second, unless you jump through a bunch of hoops and some other random crazy stuff happens. But just say 2.8 gigabytes per second. But this is truly PCI Express 4.0, which is up to 8 gigabytes per second raw throughput. And that's not just for storage. That's also for GPUs. See, GPD is uh, getting their toe in the water. This is a 7600M XT from AMD that has both an Oculink and a Thunderbolt interface. And this Oculink interface will work with other machines other than the GPD Win, like the Minis 4 Mini PC that we reviewed recently, the 780M uh, XTX. And so this is our external GPU. This is all there is to it. It's not a PCIe slot. I mean, you can get an Oculink PCIe slot and run a 4090 off of that. Uh, the Fox, who reviews the handheld devices sort of famously, uh, that's his daily driver. But this, I think, is is far more interesting because it's, it's basically an Oculink dock, but it's also Thunderbolt compatible. So if you wanted to run it off of Thunderbolt, you can, or USB 4 on the AMD land, or Oculink. You get micro SD, dual display port, and HDMI because this is a full GPU in here. And you get the cooling fan in the middle, and it's from GPD. So, real excited about this. Let's see what else we get in the box. This is an M.2 to Oculink adapter, which I'm sure will be infinitely handy. Got our Thunderbolt 4 cable. It's pretty cool that they include that. Get some mounting screws for our M.2. And we've got our power cord. The power brick for this is, is built in. And then we've got some uh, some documentation and a user's guide. Very nice, GPD folks. Very nice. I love seeing this kind of innovation because Thunderbolt, uh, Thunderbolt at 40 gigabit, uh, we are way past time for an upgrade. We should have been on Thunderbolt 5 or 6 like two years ago. But the GPD G1 plugs into our WinMax 2 2023 edition. So this is Zen 4, 8 cores. And this, believe it or not, this is actually not the smallest laptop that GPD makes. But in my giant hands, this is a pretty tiny machine. Uh, at LTX, the Fox let me play with uh, this and I think the smaller version. And the keyboard on this is actually reasonably uh, satisfactory. It's really not a lot changed from the 2022 edition, except they added an Oculink port. You don't have to use your, your other uh, SSD port. Um, and so it's physically here on the back, as well as our USB 4 and HDMI out. The other reason I bought this is because it runs Linux really well. And I, I have some ideas about that, but that's going to have to be for another video. You've got two USB Type-A ports on the side. You've got your game control buttons. I'm really probably not going to use this for gaming. This is probably mostly going to be productivity for me. I'm probably going to end up using the gaming controls to uh, switch virtual desktops or switch work modes. It has a touchpad. The touchpad is hinged, so if you press at the top, it takes a lot more force than if you press at the bottom. 
I really hate touch pads that are like that, but I'll learn to cope. Get your built-in webcam at the bottom edge of the display. The built-in webcam is, is okay. It's, uh, I mean, you, you know, motion and stuff and the auto iris and everything else, it's not bad. It, the uh, touchpad placement is uh, perhaps a bit unfortunate because, yeah. But it could be worse. I've definitely seen worse on laptops. A really high resolution display that's glossy. You got three trigger buttons, two on the back, two on the bottom, left and right. You have a micro SD or SD card on the side. Can't use them both at the same time. That's a known thing. And there's also a 4G modem slot. There's a bit of a controversy around the 4G modem slot thing in that apparently the only modem that fits in here is pretty crappy. And no one likes that. And everybody says just use your mobile hotspot. So I didn't get the 4G model. But this is the 7840U, 64 gigabytes with 2 terabytes of memory. This unfortunately, the RAM and that sort of thing is not upgradable after the fact, so I hope to get a lot of mileage out of this. So that's why I got 64 gigabytes of memory. The 2 terabytes of storage, you can change that later, but yeah. And you've also got another, you know, M.2, 2230. We're going to be adding another 1 terabyte SSD to that for Windows, and the 2 terabyte we'll actually use for Linux. Because Proton's pretty awesome. You also got an input mode switch where you can change it to a mouse style input or a controller style input in terms of using the joysticks for uh, mouse like or mouse cursor like control. What else we get in the box? Well, some paper documentation, a white USB C charger cable, and a power brick. Power adapter. This can do 20 volts, 5 amps, 100 watts max. Well, you know what? That's going to go really well with the Level 1 Tex KVM, the Combo Power Delivery KVM, the new ones. Well, those can do up to 120 watts. We originally were bundling 65 watt power bricks because uh, that's all we could get. But for the Combo, the dual monitor ones, we're now bundling 120 watt power bricks. Yay! And uh, very soon we will be bundling free upgraded 120 watt power bricks with the single monitor USB-C power delivery KVM. Yay, go level one. Mostly thanks to you, support of our fans and folk. Um, we're doing better, thank you. So, fun times. Who knows if I don't like it. <laughs> maybe you'll be able to buy it on forum.level1text.com. Sensor, power button, maybe that's something I can get working on Linux. Or if you're particularly precocious, maybe you can get it working on Linux and share that on your GitHub. Oh yeah, DDR5 first boot. Mm, that takes a little while. This laptop is the perfect size for a fanny pack. I say that, you think it's a joke. This is the part where I tell you that I literally wore a utility belt when I was in grade school and through high school and in college. It's actually really handy. Your trusty graphing calculator can never be too close. Fortunately, with the touchpad, you can just tap. You don't have to click. Let's not connect to any network. It's just like, no. All right, now that we've got our initial setup done, what does it look like connecting our external GPU? I mean, this is awesome. Dual 144 hertz, full fat DisplayPort 1.4. It's a 7600M. You can do whatever you want. We're just gonna plug in power and an Oculink cable. Both of our displays connected. A Gigabyte 4K 144 and a Pixio 1440p 144, maybe 120. Now, Oculink, unfortunately, is just PCIe. You're not going to get power or USB or anything else over that. Well, I mean, theoretically, you could get USB if you have a USB host controller farther upstream, but I don't think the G1 does that. You can connect both Thunderbolt and Oculink, but you're not going to get Thunderbolt functionality. You're just going to get USB and power delivery. No PCIe tunneling. No USB 4. Now, for my part of it, <laughs> my Oculink cable, it's a, it's a one meter, three feet Oculink cable. A lot of the time it would only link up at PCI Express Gen 3 instead of Gen 4, which is significantly slower. It's not really GPD's fault. I mean, this type of Oculink cable is meant for use inside a server, which is typically a shielded environment. But the cable itself has also got another layer of shielding. But it's pretty thin shielding. And in practice, like you pick up a lot of noise from the connectors and being right next to USB devices, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So in my environment, it's a challenged RF environment. There's a lot of stuff that's going to throw off a lot of noise. And because of that, and because of the length of this cable, most of the time, for me, it only links up a PCIe Gen 3. Fortunately, a shorter, you know, 40, 50 centimeter 
uh, Oculink cable. It's only about 20 bucks and took care of the issue so that my GPD G1 would link up at Gen 4 most of the time. Now you can connect the USB-C and the Oculink both to your uh, GPD win, but really the recommendation is to use the power brick, which is a hundred Watts because the G one is not going to supply a hundred Watts and power for the GPU at the same time. But if you don't connect the USB to the non USB four port, the just regular USB port, then you don't have a path for the USB ports on the G one to get back to the actual device. If you use Thunderbolt, only the Thunderbolt connection, and the USB 4 connection, then you get a little bit of power delivery. It won't charge and play games at the same time, uh, but you also get a USB connection and you can use it kind of like a dock. And it's small enough that you can travel with it. In fact, that's the thing that makes sense to me for this use case is that it's so small you can travel with it for gaming. Otherwise, I think it makes more sense to get a larger PCI Express dock or a larger dock that will work with your Oculink connection plus USB plus actual power delivery at 100 watts and beyond. So... Uh, you know, your mileage may vary. I, it's pretty cool what GPD is doing with this device, but understand, basically, you're a beta tester. And also, Thunderbolt 5 can't get here fast enough, or AMD needs to go ahead and eclipse Intel with PCIe Gen 5 and their own PCIe Gen 5 tunneling standard. I mean, come on. It's 2024. Come on. Well, just about. I don't really know how to describe it, but... Just the general feeling that I have, like we've crossed some sort of Rubicon because three terabytes of storage, 64 gigabytes of memory, eight cores that are this fast in an x86 envelope with a six to eight hour battery life. My actual usage on this brightness was around six hours, like just productivity usage, answering emails, non-gaming workloads, obviously. And um, I, that's, that's, I, I don't know what to make of that. That's just... It's incredible. It's incredible how far we've come. Uh, other than the Oculink problem, the only other things that I didn't really like is the audio is a little... Mm, they really didn't put a lot of work into the speakers, the built-in speakers. And I would have liked to have seen, uh, you know, like the, the really, really, really tiny GPDs. They have a, a lanyard hole so that you can put something in there to, you know, have a strap. I'd love to have something like that in one of the front corners for this as well. Uh, the fingerprint reader also straight trash. I mean, my fingers maybe don't have the most legible fingerprints or maybe they do. I don't know. But on the Windows operating system, it was straight trash. Fortunately, I'm going to be using mostly Linux on this. It doesn't work on Linux anyway, so I'm not going to be tempted to use it. But no matter what I did, I could not get logged in with the fingerprint reader. Now, we might need to go a little off script here. I want to turn on resizable bar, but there's no option for that by default in the uh, GPD Win Max 2 2023 BIOS. But you can hit Alt F5. And Alt F5 is going to show items for debug. And you have to save and exit and come back in after you do that. So save, reboot, come back in. But then you've got this advanced menu after that. And in the advanced menu, you have all the AMD options, including resizable bar, which you can toggle on. You can also disable fast boot because if you are using the Oculink for a PCIe interface, fast boot sometimes doesn't work with that. And so if you're going really off script or you're like me and you're going to, you know, use it with like a PLX switch and some high speed peripherals, you, you're going to have to leave without fast boot whenever it's docked. Sorry. But there's nothing wrong with the device. It's just because you're, you're doing crazy stuff. There we go. All I have to do is enable resize bar. And now benchmark number go up. I should mention that probably Thunderbolt 3 is the reason the resizable bar is disabled because a lot of NVIDIA users that use an eGPU on this platform will have stuttering and other weird issues when resizable bar is enabled. It's probably why it's hidden and disabled by default. But if you know what you're doing, you can re-enable it and it might work for you. But if it doesn't work or you get weird stuttering, turn it back off. If you want a preview of what I have in mind for this next, you should look up the HP 100LX, HP 200LX. The team that designed that knew exactly what portable computing needed to be. And it is an incredible mobile experience. And that was in the days before there were 
there was email. It was a personal information manager. You could do word processing. You could kind of download your email asynchronously and then answer it and then upload your emails later. But like nobody ever really used it for that use case because it was days before there was that kind of connectivity. But for a personal information manager and being able to take notes, write your thoughts down, do spreadsheet stuff. I used it for uh, experimentation. Like it was, it was a long, long since obsolete device. But when I was in college running physics experiments, I would capture all of my data and then <laughs> export it to Excel because well, it only had Lotus one, two, three, which is from the dawn of time, even then. And, um, it was nice to be able to just go from one spreadsheet to another turning it on and immediately being able to use it. We don't even have that today. There's so much usability and user interface things that we've forgotten. And so I think that I'm going to uh, uh, modify Linux because you can forget this kind of stuff with Windows and make the thing wake up and sleep in about a second or so and use the game interface as, as a kind of uh, uh, what I intend to do with it when I wake it up in terms of taking notes or checking on something or just jotting something down. So It'll have to be future content, but for now, this is just a quick look at the GPT G1 and the uh, WinMax 2 2023. Everybody beat me to the punch on the WinMax 2 2023, but this isn't an early bird sample or anything like that. I actually ordered it, went through the channels, ordered it in August, and it took until December 6th to get here. So... Uh, Indiegogo, I don't know, it's a little bit rolling the dice, but I really like what AMD's doing with their mobile processors and uh, the mobile GPU and the mobile, like, it's just, there's a lot to like here in terms of battery life and everything else. I'm Waldo, this is Level 1, I'm signing out, you can find more of our stuff on YouTube, but also if you just want to ask questions, hang out in uh, in the uh, on the forum or see a future video on this, that, or the other, let me know. Alright, signing out, and I'll see you later.